Hello, viewers. It's time to get back to some brewing. I'm going to be brewing with this new root that I brought back from Korea. So this is uh, this is exciting. This is the first time I'm brewing since I since I got back. Um, and this is uh, a pretty standard new root. It's maybe the most common one that you can buy online in Korea. Which, which I did, and uh, it, it's soyokok, and uh, the green uh, package here is made with Korean wheat, and the orange package is made with U.S. wheat. And uh, I'm told, actually Sari John of uh, Suguk Seoul told me that they pretty much taste the same. And uh, so we're going to uh, we're going to do side by side and verify that. Also, I just want to know what this kind of nuru tastes like. And uh, what I'm going to do first off is to um, measure the nuru. I'm going to use uh, just going to do a one kilogram rice batch. So I'm going to use 90 grams each um, for my two batches. And uh, I'm going to uh, put them in the sun for a while. That that the um, Bob Chen method, that's um, sort of an abbreviated method. Um, but it is sunny today. Uh, I don't think I have time to do it for a full day, but I'll do it for for the afternoon at least. And that'll be, uh, that'll, that should be enough. I, I'll put this in the sun and, uh, and brew with it uh, in the evening. So it'll stay in the sun in the afternoon and I'll, and I'll, I'll wash my rice um, and soak it now, and then I'll be able to steam it in the evening. So that's my plan. That's what you're going to see in this video. And if you like this video, please click that like button and subscribe. Click the bell to be notified because I have a new video every week up on the subject of rustic Asian rice wine. You want to keep up with that? Uh, subscribe, click the bell, and please share this video wherever it is appropriate. I I, uh, I really want your help in spreading the word about makgeolli and rustic Asian rice wine. So I appreciate your help. So thank you for that. And uh, so let's get uh, let's get measuring and doing uh, putting it in the sun. Let's let's do that now. So this is the new root made with uh, Korean wheat, and I'm going to spread this out on this plate. Both of these have this acarification power of 300, which I think is pretty normal. This is, uh, so I hope this works just the same as the new rook I normally buy at H Mart. And what I want here is some direct sun. And now the sun is through the screen here, but that's good. So I want, I don't want it through a window. I do want direct sun, but not too windy not rainy either, so of course this depends on the weather. That's part of brewing uh, along with the seasons and nature. You have to go along with the weather. The purpose of this is to air out the new rug, uh, in case it got a little damp, that would be a problem. The way to fix that if it has a bad smell is to air it out like this and the sun will sort of uh, clean it up. It already contains the enzymes we need we definitely don't want a moldy new root. That would be bad. And uh, putting in the sun helps uh, helps get rid of that. So, um, but this this smells great. Uh, they both smell fresh. So there's no problem with this new root. Uh, but this is the standard thing. It's a good idea to do this for all new root. So that's uh, so I'm going to leave this here all afternoon, and hopefully it doesn't get windy. And I'll I'll. Uh, I'll see you in a few minutes when I'm uh, washing the rice. So this is the rice I'm using. This is Thai sweet rice. For me, this has been working just the same as chop sal, or at least the kind of chop sal that I can buy at uh, H Mart. And uh, so, so I'm I'm happy with the Thai sweet rice. It ferments well and it's easy to get here, so that's what I'm using. Uh, I'm making single stage brews today. This is Danyang Ju. This is the simplest recipe. I just want to compare the Soyul Gok Nuruk that I'm using, that I've never used before. Um, I want to 
you know, find out what it tastes like. So I'm using the simplest possible recipe that will remove as many variables as possible. So what I need is two kilograms of rice, one kilogram for each of the two varieties of Nuruk. Okay, so this is two kilograms of Thai sweet rice. I'm going to wash it gently in cold water here and uh, and let it soak. So it's going to take about uh, 10 or 15 minutes to wash. Um, you want it to be gentle. And uh, so that's what I'm doing right now. And I want to say this, please, uh, please keep those comments and questions coming. I always like uh, learning what you're brewing and uh, what kind of questions you have. Um, so, so, um, Please, uh, please let me know and uh, you know, write a comment, write a message to me. I am able to answer most of the questions, I hope. And uh, even though this recipe, this is a very standard recipe, the Danyangju recipe, I, I always tell people that I learned this from the primer on brewing makgeolli that I've um, referred to many times earlier on this channel, that it's a great resource. That's how I got started. And uh, this recipe is very reliable, and that's why I'm using it to compare these, uh, these new varieties of new root that I'm trying out. And uh, I'll let you know later in the video um, a bit more about how I got this new root and uh, how I ordered it, how much it cost. I'll, uh, I'll put that later in this, in this video. As the rice starts up soaking water, it does get softer. So you have to be careful not to break the grains of rice. You're not trying to break the grains. Um, so especially now, I have to be even more gentle. I want the water to look relatively clear when I'm rinsing it. Um, it's, it doesn't have to be clear after I agitate it, but it should be, should look clear as I pour the water in. So the water is cloudy now. So I put in fresh water. It still looks cloudy. So I'm going to pour this off too. Okay, so still a bit cloudy. I think one more time should do it though. So it's, that's relatively clear now. It, it's already been almost 15 minutes of washing the rice. That's enough. So I'm just going to set this aside to soak for at least three hours. So that'll soak for three hours. And uh, let's, uh, let's look at the uh, new root that's been in the sun. So luckily it's still sunny. I just have to move the chairs around a little bit to keep these plates in the sun. Um, and like I said, uh, this Nuruk, uh, it smells good. There's no problem with it. This is just a, a bit of preventative. Uh, this is a preventative measure only. Um, probably didn't have to do it this time, but it's a good habit. So I'm going to leave this here and let the rice soak and I'll get back to you later. Okay, now it's the evening and I've brought in the new rook. It's not sunny anymore, might as well bring it in. So I'll put this to the side. And now, um, since the rice has been soaking for more than three hours, I'm going to drain it now. And I'm going to rinse it. be back in uh, 30 minutes to steam it. 
Got the cheesecloth ready here. It's, I damp, I got it damp. It's fine. It's going to be in the steamer. So here's the rice that's all drained. So spread out the rice, make sure it gets in the corners. And just fold over the cloth. Put the lid on. Once it's really come to a boil, you can see the steam up at condensing at the top here. I'll turn it down and start the timer. That'll be 35 minutes. This uh, this rice takes a little less time to cook than the chop sal I get from H Mart. So I Instead of 40 minutes, I steam it for 35 minutes. And in just, uh, in just a minute or two, this will be up to temperature and I can start the timer. Yeah, everything's ready. So I'll start the timer, 35 minutes. And uh, yeah, see you then. Okay, so in the meantime, let's get the Nuruk mixture ready. This is the Nuruk made with Korean wheat, and I'm just going to mix it with water and some wine yeast and set it aside, let it soak for a while. So this is the original 90 grams of Nuruk, uh, and we're going to add 200 milliliters of water. And here's the wine yeast. Uh, this is the kind I usually use. And again, I'm doing, the, I'm using wine yeast just to remove any other variables. Um, it's not absolutely necessary. You can, you can brew mockley without wine yeast, but I'm using it just to reduce one of the variables. Okay, so this is half a teaspoon. And here's the new root that's made with the American wheat. So same preparation for this new rook. Um, and uh, I should mention that I'm, uh, I'm just going to soak the new rook in water and, and, uh, and add it after the rice cools. It's, it's a uh, common method is to, is the, is the uh, sugo method. And that's where you, um, you filter this watery nuruk and just use the liquid. That's common method used in Korea to brew. And that you can use that to, uh, if your nuruk is especially strong tasting, that'll make it milder. But I actually want to get the full flavor of the nuruk in these brews. So I don't want to make the flavor milder. I want the full rich flavor of the nuruk here. So I am, I'm just brewing the simple way without any filtering of the watery new root. I'm just going to use this, let it soak and use it. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside and we'll add it later. Spread this out to cool now. Let this cool to uh, below 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, the rice has cooled down and uh, the nuruk has been soaking as well. And I can smell the nuruk. Now it has, um, now the aroma of nuruk is much more apparent. It still smells wheaty and like a, like a farm. Um, not unpleasant, like a, yeah, still, so clean, not moldy, even though, of course, Nuruk is made with mold, but you don't want it to smell moldy. I'll divide it evenly with the help of the scale here. And uh, if you're interested in any of the equipment or ingredients I use, please see the description. I have everything in there. So let's, uh, yeah, so let's divide this evenly. So 
Now the two jars have the same amount of rice. So um, start off with two kilograms of, of uncooked rice. So each of these contains one kilogram of, uh, of the original rice cooked. And for A, it's going to be this first nuruk, which is the nuruk made with Korean wheat. Let's pour that in. Now I'm adding 800 milliliters of water. So that's, that'll make one liter in total since I used 200 milliliters for the, for the soaking the nuruk. Okay, this is the soak nuruk made with the American wheat. and 800 milliliters of water. So now I'm going to mix these and I'm gonna mix them by hand. It's actually really important to mix these well and a lot of, uh, to get the nuruk in contact with every bit of rice. And you want this very evenly mixed and uh, a lot of Korean recipes that I've seen, you mix this in a separate bowl or something, but you mix it for like 15 minutes by hand. So this is, I don't, I don't usually do it that long, just until it's evenly mixed, but just so you know, it's a normal thing to mix with your hand. It's part of the, part of the process. So might as well enjoy it. This is a handmade product. If any of the grains of rice are clumped together, I'm breaking them up. And I'll mix up B. So now the nuruk and rice are evenly mixed and I'm just going to wipe this off a bit at the top. We're going to be mixing this later anyhow. Um, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I do sanitize my jars beforehand, inside and out with uh, star sand. That should give this experiment a good start. Leave the lids slightly loose and I'll put these in the cabinet right now. Here we go, the temperature is around 23 degrees Celsius in the kitchen, so it should be good for fermenting. So let it ferment and I'll come back to it tomorrow morning. So it's the next morning. Let's check out these two jars. course they both soaked up all the water they, so they look pretty dry but if I listen to them I can hear I can hear the bubbles and another part of stirring it uh, for the you can really feel the texture when you stir it so that's important and uh, it introduces oxygen into the brew so that um, lactic acid bacteria can grow and also the, the yeast can get a good start in reproducing. It has this extra oxygen. It's evening now and let's see what these look like. Top is looking wetter. You can even see some bubbles at the top. You know, look at those bubbles. Oh, so it's fermenting away. I'm sure it's going to feel softer when I stir it. Take a look. Oh, yeah.
This is day two, 36 hours. And I'll stir again today. It's been about 48 hours. This will be the last time I stir it. And you can really hear the bubbling. So this is going well. And since this is the last time I'm going to stir, I will wipe off the edge here. Day three. It's day four. You can see the layers are uh, have moved a bit. This uh, the soft liquid layer is larger now, and uh, some rice has fallen from the top to the bottom. There's all this broken down rice here. It's fermenting well. Day five. It's day six. Look at this. This is this is almost done. Uh, you can see that A. It looks like A is more fermented than B. Uh, it is true that the pieces of Nuruk for A were smaller pieces than B. That that might be the difference, uh, but. They, uh, they do smell the same, but it does look like A has fermented a bit quicker. Um, but they're both pretty advanced, and uh, especially in A, you see that all the grain is, is being, is being uh, softened and is falling, all the grains of rice. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, this is almost done. Uh, see you tomorrow. It's day seven. By appearance, these are pretty much done. But when I listen to them, I still hear bubbling. So I'm not going to filter this today. It's day eight. Look how even both of these brews look. And uh, from, from the top, I can hear some slow bubbling. This really looks done to me. And it is fermenting a bit, but maybe I think I will bottle today. So I wanted to tell you how I bought these and how much I paid for those Soyol Go Nuruk. So this was, uh, the green one is the one made with Korean wheat and that's more expensive. I paid 7,800 won for that and uh, this Orange one is made with American wheat, and that, um, and this one I paid four thousand won. So this, uh, so this one is less than six dollars U.S., and this one is less than three dollars U.S. And these are one kilogram packages, so that's great. Um, so this is uh, less than half the price of the new root I can buy in the U.S. at H Mart. And uh, and it works up. It works great. Um, so I, I'm very happy with it. And uh, I ordered these online while I was in Korea for delivery within Korea. I ordered them on G Market, and uh, you might need some help from a friend, a Korean friend, or someone with a Korean phone number, to be able to enter a Korean delivery address properly. Um, but. Uh, if you're in Korea for long enough, you know, uh, for a week or so, you, you can, uh, that's enough time to order something and get it delivered, uh, you know, allow for any contingencies. That's what, uh, that's what you can do. Just order it online. And uh, that's what I did. And I'm very happy with it. So I'll be uh, testing out more Nuruk in the future. So stay tuned for that. My impression so far of this Nuruk, uh, is that it's working really well. It has, uh, this looks very complete. It's uh, really done the job. So I think uh, so far my impression is that 
this Korean Nuruk, the Soyul Gok, is uh, is better than the kind I normally buy from the H Mart here in the U.S. So uh, I'm very pleased to have this Nuruk and to be able to brew with it. I'm eager to see what this uh, tastes like. It's a uh, yeah, so it's it's only been eight days. It hasn't been that warm. Uh, maybe 21, 22 degrees Celsius. So uh, here in the kitchen. So yeah, it's good. Uh, I think I think this will be good. All right, it's time to bottle. So I'm boiling the filter bag. This is a nylon filter bag. Uh, pretty easy to deal with. I'm letting this boil for a few minutes. So I'm going to filter jar A first, and this looks very liquid. First thing I'm going to do is stir it. Yeah, it feels very liquid. And the reason I'm stirring it is to make sure there's nothing stuck on the bottom here, because my method is just gonna to be to pour the whole jar out into the filter bag. I don't want anything stuck on the bottom. Okay, not bad, but there's still that bit at the bottom. And I just need to gently squeeze this. It's coming out on its own, but eventually the sediment will clog up the filter and I'll need to uh, sort of agitate it around, squeeze some more. Okay, so that was easy to squeeze through the filter. And this is 262 grams of Jigeni. So let's get this into the bottles. So I'm getting a full two liters of Wanju here. And I will add some water to this and filter a second time just to get uh, that extra bonus bowl. So I add the jiggy back to the filter bag and I pour in 200 milliliters of water. And that's going to help me extract just a bit more of the alcohol and flavor out of the jiggy. But I, I do need to really massage this, let the water flow through it multiple times to extract as much as possible. So what remains after the second filtering is uh, 221 grams. So we have extracted uh, 40 grams more out of this. So that's, uh, so that's great. Um, this does feel a bit drier. And this bonus bowl is what the brewer gets to taste today. And I'm going to filter jar B. And I'm going to use the same filter bag for consistency. I washed it and uh, I'm boiling it again. And this is 254 grams of Jigami. And for the bonus bowl, I'll put the jigami back into the filter bag. And the weight of the jigami has decreased from 254 grams to 216 grams. So it's pretty much the same as jar A. Here's everything bottled. I got two liters from both of them. 
The main thing I want to find out is how this new rook affects the flavor. Is this going to give the makgeolli a, a different flavor? So that's, that's what I'm most interested in. I'm going to taste this right now and compare it. And of course, I'm also going to compare the wanju in, uh, in, in three days. I'll make that comparison. But first I'll taste these. So first uh, jar A, okay, and then jar B. These taste the same to me. Um, there was some difference in the brewing. Jar, um, jar B here, um, this new rook originally was in larger pieces than the new rook here. And I think that was just an accident of me pouring it out of the bag. I got small pieces when I poured out the new rook for, for jar A, and I got larger pieces of new rook for jar B. And so it seemed like uh, jar A went a little bit faster in terms of fermentation. That after eight days, they it, it looked the same to me, but uh, that was a difference. And uh, but I don't think that's because of the differences in wheat. So A is the Korean uh, wheat, and uh, B is the American wheat. Um, so I don't think that affected the flavor. They both have uh, they actually have a more robust flavor than I'm used to. Let me taste this again. Bit of a fruity taste, um, but also. Maybe I, I do taste the Nuruk a bit more than the uh, supermarket Nuruk. It's not a bad flavor. It's a, it is a bit fruity, but a bit rich on the sort of the, the wheaty and the sort of malty Nuruk flavor. So this Nuruk, the Soyulgo Nuruk, I'm very pleased with so far. It... Uh, Enzyme action is great, and it uh, it has a pleasant flavor. We'll get more details in a few days. I'll talk to you then. So take a look at how much these bottles have settled in three days. It, um, they've settled really well. Uh, the Chongju layer is still a bit cloudy. Um, yeah, but it, it settled really well. So let's taste. So it's been three days and it's time to taste this Makgeolli I brewed with Soyul Gok Nuruk from Korea. So I had uh, this one brewed with the uh, Nuruk made with Korean wheat and this one made with the uh, Nuruk made with U.S. wheat. Um, they should taste roughly the same. Um, I'm not going to be able to drink the Changju layer by itself because it, uh, it, uh, bubbled up a bit. It's really quite cloudy now. So I'm I'm going to mix up both of these and taste them as wanju, everything mixed together. Just to uh, give you an idea of what I'm planning in the future, I'm also going to try following the instructions on the package, which would involve using a lot more nuruk in proportion to the rice. That's the recipe on the package, but uh, it fermented fine with my normal ratio of 90 grams of Nuruk to one kilogram of rice. So A, the one made with uh, Nuruk made with uh, Korean wheat. Okay, I did, I thought I bottled this pretty early. It was a little carbonated. I tried keeping it open. Okay, it's not going to bubble over. That's good. Let's have a taste. So the usual aroma is just a bit sweet. It has some, you can smell the alcohol. This is reasonably strong for, for a single stage brew. You can smell the alcohol. It's, um, it is fresh. It's a, it does have that edge to it, that harshness. Yeah, it's a, it is a little, little sharp. There's a nice milky flavor and texture in it too. Yeah, so this is 
well, I think completely standard and reliable flavor that, you know, if I, if I knew I was going to get this every time, that would be, I'd be happy. That'd, that'd be great. This still has sweetness. It's not overly sour. So a nice balance for a quick brew. So this is made with the cheaper U.S. wheat. People in Korea that want to brew with all Korean ingredients would want to pay the premium to use the Korean wheat. So that makes sense. So these work the same. Flavor is the same. Um, it's a good flavor that's produced a balanced brew that has sweetness, tartness, some sharpness from the, yeah, it, and it, there's plenty of alcohol in it. The enzymes worked fine. They, um, it actually seemed to break down quite efficiently. Uh, so, and you know, maybe faster than the Nuruk that I normally buy from the H Mart here in the U.S. So it might be might be a bit more powerful um, than than that Nuruk. It's just rated at 300 SP, the sacrification power. Um, it's rated at 300, which I guess is pretty standard for commercial Nuruk. Um, and uh, I'd like to thank Mira for uh, helping me order this online in Korea. And uh, I'll explain the process of uh, how you should get Nuruk in Korea in an upcoming video. But I just want to be sure to thank Mira now because uh, without her, I wouldn't have been able to order this properly. So I'm really glad I was able to uh, bring this Nuruk back and brew with it today. So, um, yeah, so it, it, it was fun for me today to uh, to taste my brews brewed with Korean Nuruk. Um, I never had a chance to uh, I never had a chance to do that before. I was always brewing with uh, you know, um, Nuruk made in the U.S. and uh, so this is great. Um, I hope you found this interesting. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I'll do my best to answer them, and uh, I appreciate any comments you might have. And I appreciate you making it to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.